Hey everyone, my name's Gorel, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Spinny Guard in a Cage, aka the Plasma Sentinel. Priced at a moderate 50 capacity, this full block trap is the only thing currently in the game with a full spherical field of fire. After a raider enters its detection range of about 5.5 blocks, it'll lock onto them, firing a slow, unguided projectile. And it'll fire that at the last visible position that it sees the raider at the time the projectile is released. So if the raider steps back out of the range or steps around a corner, it will fire at the last known visible location of them. It will do this even if the position is outside its normal targeting range, so once it starts to lock on, even if the raider steps back outside that 5.5 block radius, it will continue to target the raider's current position unless the raider steps behind cover, at which point it will target the last position that it saw the raider. Now, at the edge of its normal targeting range of 5.5 blocks, the projectile has about one and a third seconds of travel time. The Plasma Sentinel will then enter a recharge mode for about 3 seconds before it's ready to take aim and fire again. Now, since the projectile is aimed directly at the Raider's position, and it's quite slow, Raiders can generally easily avoid the shot at anything but point-blank range. The projectile can also be blocked by any sort of equipment or weapons that normally blocks things, and you can also shoot it down with stuff like the Plasma Crossbow here. So, it's very easy to deflect, it's very easy to avoid, and you can pretty much not care about a single Plasma Sentinel in most cases. The Arc Barrier and Deployable Shields will of course block it, other Plasma Sentinel shots will block it, uh, Guard Projectiles will block it, Grenades will blow it up, basically every piece of Raider equipment and most of the traps currently in the game, with the exception of the Sledge Blade, will counter the projectiles that this thing fires. Now, despite how weak a single Plasma Sentinel is, it varies between totally useless and very slightly useful, they're often considered one of the most hated traps in the game, and the reason for this really boils down to two things, spam and mods. Plasma Sentinel spam is incredibly annoying, and it's a great way to convince a raider to either never play your base, or to leave it and provide no accolades. Don't build bases out of these things. Having several Plasma Sentinels in a room is fine. Building the floors, walls, and ceiling of every room out of them is not fine. Additionally, while the mods we'll visit in a moment are very attractive and powerful, reconsider if you really, really need them. Many of the Plasma Sentinel's objectives can be accomplished perfectly without using any mods whatsoever. Alright, so let's take a look at what these much maligned mods actually do. Now, Eagle Eye is probably the least popular of them, but it increases the range of the Plasma Sentinel from 5.5 to roughly 7.5 blocks. That's a 2-block range increase, or about 40%. But you have to consider the spherical firing volume of the Plasma Sentinel. Because an Incinerator, for instance, uh, that hits a 1x1 one one line and with the Dragon's Breath mod increases the range from 4 blocks to 5 blocks, about a 25% increase. But the 1x1 one one shape of that uh, area, or that volume, it means that that's a 25% volume increase. But, if we take a look at a little bit of math here, the volume of a sphere, the formula for that is 4 thirds times pi times r cubed, or radius cubed. Now, I'll spare you the math on this, but the default hittable volume of a plasma sentinel is just under 697 cubic blocks. Uh, that resulting hittable volume, when you add the eagle eye mod, though, goes up to an absolutely massive 1,767 cubic blocks. This works out to a whopping 254% increase in volume targeted, or the total volume that the Plasma Sentinel can potentially hit. Now, put simply, a single Plasma Sentinel in a central location with this mod can hit the entirety of a small plot with distance to spare. If we back out here and look at this, I've got this Plasma Sentinel in this small plot. It's pretty much dead center at a reasonable height up here. And if I hit the Y key on that, so that will show us our effective hittable range, you can see that that actually extends well beyond the edge of this plot. And it does that in every direction. This thing is absolutely huge when you have Eagle Eye on it. Now, this does come with two downsides to this mod. The first is pretty obvious. How often are you going to have an open volume of space that's large enough to use the entirety of that range? Well. Of course, the answer is not very often, right? You can't even fit the full range of this thing into a small plot if the Plasma Sentinel is in the center of the plot. Uh, on the edge, of course, you could, but then you're throwing away half the volume and it, it, you basically lose a lot of the benefit of the mod, right? But the second downside is actually the largest one. 
and that's that Eagle Eye does not increase the projectile speed in the slightest, so the already easily avoided or deflected or uh, shot down projectile gets even easier to deal with at the longer ranges. Now still, this mod is something to keep in mind whenever you want to add pressure and danger to a large open area, because it does allow the Plasma Sentinel to continue to be a threat throughout a drawn-out fight, and that can draw the raider's attention and prevent them from standing still for too long in some cases. Alright, let's get into the most popular mod for these things, Plasma Cloud. This thing creates a cloud of glowy red death wherever the projectile lands, lasting approximately 5 seconds. While the original projectile is still immediately lethal to the raider, the cloud is not. The raider must remain in its radius for about 3 quarters of a second, basically identical to a corrosive cube, uh, before they actually die. Now this mod is very commonly despised by slow raiders. It does next to nothing to stop speedrunners, but it makes slow raiders wait 5 seconds between each time they poke their head out of a tunnel entrance to take a shot, or uh, every time that they want to approach the area where this Plasma Sentinel is in operation. So it can be very good at drawing fire, because obviously the raider wants to get rid of it, but you have to be careful with this thing, because it kind of kills the pace and fun of the map for slow raiders, right? If you have ten of these things in a room, well, the raider can shoot three of them and kill them. Uh, maybe a few more with a grenade or something. But then they have to run away, and they have to sit there for five seconds, and they have to poke their head back in and maybe collect some ammo and shoot one more. And they have to run away and sit there for five seconds and wait for more plasma clouds to dissipate. So it really kills the fun of the map and the pace of the room for a slow raider. They can't enter the room and do anything effectively because maybe their reflexes aren't the best or because they just don't enjoy that fast-paced style of gameplay. And then they have to sit there and wait for the plasma cloud to dissipate each and every time they poke their head out of the tunnel entrance. And that's just boring. No one likes that, so be careful how many of these things you use and the scenarios that you use them in. Now, additionally, overuse of this mod may actually hurt your kill count for the map. Raiders tend to have a time-honored tradition of peeking around corners for their next shot exactly when a slow-moving projectile, like, say, the Plasma Sentinel, happens to fly past that entrance and run right into their face. Uh, that's something that you want, because this kills the raider. But if the raider has to stay away from the entryway to the room where the shot was fired for five seconds because there was a ball of glowy red death there, and it's very large and obvious, and they have a chance to react to it and back out of it with that three-quarter second kill time, well, they're not going to sit there at the entryway. They're not going to poke their nose around that corner for five seconds. And by the time that five seconds have passed, well, all the projectiles in the room have already flown past that corner and buried themselves into the wall behind where the entrance is, not into the raider's face where you want them. So you have to be a little careful with this because it can actually reduce the number of kills that you get in some cases. Now, the self-destruct mod causes the trap to explode, but unlike the explosion from the identically named self-destruct mod on the impaler trap, this explosion is not instantly lethal and it's spherical. In fact, it's the same effect as the plasma cloud. So you should be using it with about the same level of care. Uh, if we go ahead and equip that mod and we back out here, let's just go ahead and do a quick test to show this off because I didn't show off the plasma cloud mod. So after a brief moment there, this thing explodes into a glowy red ball of death that will kill the raider if they spend three quarters of a second inside of it. You can see uh, that was just under three quarters of a second there, and I lived just fine. Now, second wave is the usual second wave mod for traps, and it works pretty much the same way as all other full block traps, i.e. corrosive cubes and hollow cubes. The plasma sentinel will appear as indestructible bedrock until the gen mat is picked up, after which it will undergo a four second arming cycle before it's ready to target and fire. Unlike the corrosive cube and hollow cube though, this thing is destructible before those four seconds are up. It behaves more like a normal trap in that regard. So uh, be careful how you expose these things when you're using the second wave mod, because they are quite vulnerable to destruction until they're ready to fire. Now let's go ahead and move on to some use cases and tactics. Plasma Sentinels can be used in a wide variety of ways that just aren't fun, and honestly I'm not going to cover those in this video, because most of us as raiders have already encountered most of those cases. Suffice it to say that you should avoid excessive use of the Plasma Cloud and Self-Destruct mods for this trap, and try and keep the number of Plasma Sentinels you use down. 
The game limits you to 20 guards in an outpost for a pretty good reason, and the Plasma Sentinel is a guard in all respects except for its mobility. So try and keep the number that you use down and respect that 20 limit for your own good, if not for the Raiders. Uh, you, you're not going to get many fun accolades if all you do is build geometry out of these things. So how should you use these things? Well, obviously they're great for adding pressure to open air environments, right? Uh, their massive volume of area that they can fire towards uh, heavily encourages their use in wide open rooms. Any situation where there's a big old guard fight room can often be improved by adding a few of these scattered around. Uh, note the word a few in there. You don't want these everywhere, you don't want a ceiling made out of them, but four or five of them is generally an improvement to a guard fight room because it makes the room harder without being spammy or unfun. Additionally, the Plasma Sentinel has a very restricted angle of fire when other blocks are placed adjacent to it, so often you want them somewhat out in the open to maximize their field of fire, which even further encourages their use in wide open areas. Now, the best use of all of these things, at least in my opinion though, is a temporary ammo trap. Now, there's several reasons for this. The difficulty landing grenades on them, right? You can put them into a wall like this, and they're actually extremely difficult to land or time a grenade to go off on the Plasma Sentinel. You can also uh, try and close in on the Plasma Sentinel and destroy it in melee, but it's going to get a shot off before you do, unless you go in there with like a stim pack active for some reason. So it's going to be quite difficult to destroy the thing outright, and, well, I can just shoot the thing, right? Well, then my ammo is over there, and I've got to go get it back. So they function as very effective ammo traps, because usually using the Volt Lancer is how you disable these things. Now, additionally, raiders tend to shoot the most immediately threatening trap with their ranged weapons, regardless of the level of threat that trap actually presents. And the inability to destroy the plasma sentinels with the plasma crossbow also plays into this, right? So, I, can't, I know I can't destroy either of these two traps with my plasma crossbow here. I need to use the Volt Lancer. Well, let's, let's just say here that I only have one shot left. Which of these two traps am I going to choose to destroy? Well... The incinerator looks kind of sus, uh, shall we say. There's a bunch of open air underneath it, and I don't necessarily want to shoot that and risk my ammo embedding itself in that rock overhead, so the plasma sentinel is a safer shot, and it's also going to mean that there's nothing shooting back at me while I go get my ammo back. So most raiders are going to shoot the plasma sentinel in there, despite the fact that the incinerator is by far a more deadly trap in most circumstances. The Plasma Sentinel has a longer perceived threat range, so the Raider has a lot more inclination to shoot that first. That makes it a perfect magnet for the Raider's Volt Lancer shots. And that means that I'm going to need to go over there and get within a block and a half or so of that Plasma Sentinel. And that's often in a very wide open, unprotected area, because that's where Plasma Sentinels work best. Now, until they go back and get that ammo, they're going to be down one shot per Plasma Sentinel. So three or four of these things in open areas will mean that the Raider is often down three or four shots. Well, they obviously only have three. So that can mean that they are out of ammo when more immediate pressing traps uh, come after them. So you can use that to form those ammo traps and just take away Raider's options temporarily. Not permanently, because that's not fun. That's not what you want to do. But temporarily, you can restrict their options and then use those restricted options to try and get a kill on them. Alright, so let's take one last look at this scenario here. If I just walk up to this thing, the Plasma Sentinel is going to be the first thing that fires at me. That means most Raiders are going to be most inclined to shoot the Plasma Sentinel first, even though the Incinerator is probably the bigger threat here. So now my ammo is up there, I'm out of ammo, I can't destroy that Incinerator, so I'm going to go up and get my ammo back, right? But that is a potentially fatal mistake, because now I'm in the middle of open space up here, and there are multiple things going off behind me that can kill me. So use these things as ammo traps, and then try and kill the raider as they make themselves vulnerable trying to retrieve their ammo. One last note on the Eagle Eye mod, you can use this thing to extreme effect by allowing you to space your sentinels further apart. Sentinels in close proximity to each other are very vulnerable to being used as cover against each other, if you can grapple from one sentinel to the next before it can fire, you can just kind of chain kill the whole chain of sentinels, and you can do that with a melee weapon easily. 
Eagle Eye can help prevent this by ensuring that the trap gets plenty of time to target and fire before the raider actually gets to the next sentinel. Also, it can ensure that a plasma sentinel at the back corner of a large room can cover the whole room, which is quite useful. Now, finally, consider the use of single plasma sentinels with self-destruct in small tunnel corners, preferably facing down long hallways at the entrance and exit. The raider has to destroy the sentinel or risk being shot down on either the approach or the exit, and the self-destruct bubble is large enough to cover most of this particular room. So if I was to put a roof over this, the raider would have to run down this tunnel, uh, preferably with, you know, something large and angry following them down the tunnel that's quite willing to kill them, and then they have to run straight into this plasma sentinel. Well, they're going to shoot the plasma sentinel, they have to, right? Or they're just going to get shot down on the approach, or by walking around adjacent to an angry plasma sentinel, which is also not a great idea, by the way. And when they shoot this thing down, it's going to self-destruct, because it has the self-destruct mod on it here. And if the self-destruct goes off, it's going to cover most of this tunnel corner here in a cloud of red death. And there's really only a couple safe spots to stand in there. And if, again, if you have something large and angry following you down this hallway, that's not necessarily even going to save you then. So, yeah, you're, you've got to keep going forward, but you can't keep going forward without running into the self-destruct and dying. And it, at that point, it basically comes down to whether the raider can defeat whatever is following them or not. You can basically use this like a sort of pseudo-death piston setup, but the death pistons can be destroyed, and this can't, or rather, it has to be destroyed, but then the raider has to stand still for about five seconds. They can't rush past this until that cloud is dissipated. Now, because the cloud itself can't be destroyed, in many ways this is actually preferable to a death piston incinerator combo, and it's even cheaper. This whole setup here costs me 65 capacity for the uh, Plasma Sentinel with self-destruct on it. And again, it can't be cancelled by the death of the Plasma Sentinel. In fact, it's triggered by the death of the Plasma Sentinel. So it's a very effective, well, cost-effective especially, way of slowing down a raider. If you can generate enough pressure from behind or make sure that there's an actual threat following them, that can spell the raider's doom in a lot of circumstances. So that's it for the traps, and in the next video we are going to start working our way through guards, starting with the ever-so-humble yet deadly Enforcer. Hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you then.